People who are healthy, they eat more food with sun in it and less food without sun. People who are unhealthy, it's the reverse. And if you eat too much food made by people in white coats, you know what happens? You end up seeing people in white coats. I think that a lot of what we do is actually a band-aid treatment and that we're actually approaching health in what I would call the most unhealthy way. One person is diagnosed every seven minutes of diabetes. This is only Australia. 47% of the adult population and one in four kids under 15 are either overweight or obese. When you just rattle stats off like this, it doesn't feel real. But I want you to really take this in, because you live on the same planet as these people. You live in the same street. It's your mum, it's your dad, it's your brother, it's your kids. How have we in the world today arrived at such an obese society? An overfed, undernourished society? Very simple. The foods we have today do not have the nutrition that they once had. Our life has gotten so fast paced and so sedentary because of the computers and because of the way we run our lives today that we now don't act and don't get out there and move. We don't do the things we used to do and we don't have the foods we used to have. As a result of it, we're now in a nation that's obese and undernourished. And what's interesting is there's a psychology of that, and it doesn't have to be that way. We've chosen that way because we want immediate gratification instead of long-term lifestyle. And long-term lifestyle gives us our life back and gives us our body back. And immediate gratification can cost us our health. Hey buddy, do you want to fix the toaster? Yeah. You guys are right, aren't you? Yeah. Fix up yeah. what you want? Yeah. All right, I'll pour these because it's going to be too hot. Well, for my family, especially as a single parent, it really comes down to a budget. It's, I'm shopping more for a budget to fill a belly as opposed to shopping for health. I don't know, what does Kyle want? Do you want to watch this? Or do you and again, I'll say, okay, you guys need to look after yourself today because I've got all this stuff to do. And Liam will have three packets of noodles on his own. And it, you know, when you read what's on the back of the pack, it's all, MSG and all different numbers and poison and whatever. So it's really a supervision factor, um, trying to ensure that I change my shopping. I've still got to shop within a budget, but I've also got to shop so that it's healthy. And that's where, that's the challenge. You know, I mean, stuff like this, like you can't beat good old white Wonder Bread. You know, it's like a dollar a loaf, makes great toast, but um, at the end of the day, I'm probably killing my kids by feeding them this. There's your Milo's. Thank you. You're welcome, buddy. Many people are not eating wisely they're not eating whole foods, and they're accustomed for immediate gratification, and they're concentrating their diet on fats and sugars and salts, all the addictive compounds, 
We tend to think of addictive compounds in terms of drugs, and we tend to think of it in terms of alcohol, but we don't realize that one of the biggest addictors in our world today is sugar, salt, and fat. And these are rampant in our society, and they became the kind of the standard that people have been who are uneducated about food and diet. Uh, it becomes their diet. So getting back to the how well do I eat? I eat pretty good, Doc. People don't have a clue what they're putting in them that's actually killing them. It's the stuff you don't know you're putting in you that's killing you. Would you feed your children this? Synthetic hormones. Yes, no. No. Piperinol, lice treatment chemical. I mean, in their food. Next one. Propylene glycol, use an antifreeze. Probably not. Amyl acetate, used as oil paint solvent. Next one. Ethyl acetate, used in leather cleaning products. Probably not. Next one. Aldehyde C17, used in dyes, plastics, and rubber. How are we doing so far? Chances are you already have. What is it? Ice cream. In the world today, a lot of people have not looked up the etymologies and the root foamings of words. For instance, the word diet comes of the word deity, which means that which leads to good. When you're eating and drinking things that leads to the good, meaning health and functional capacities, then that's the correct diet. But in today's world, young people are getting drinks and foods and lollies and treats that have nothing to do with nutrition that is good. The prefix nut on nutrition comes of the Latin nux, which means light. Nutrition means process of light. Too many of the foods these kids are getting today are dark. They're darkness to the body. They're not light. And so what's happening, a lot of kids are starting to experience diseases that usually happens to adults later on in the 50s, 60s, 70s as they become deficient and sometimes toxicity builds up over the decades. Little kids are experiencing that. We've got to get back to that which leads to the good, diet. And this isn't some special ice cream, like the toxic brand. <laughs> this, is, this is the vast majority. Next one. What treat is this? Soft serve ice cream. Any other guesses? Some people know. The key word here is treat. It's chicken nuggets. So how did we arrive at a place where we treat our children by putting toxic chemicals in them? And some of you are a bit like squirmy because you're the grandma, grandpa, and the grandkids come over and, yeah, I have some more, I have some ice cream, some chocolate topping, and all the stuff. But it's, it's what our parents did for us, right? Maybe they were trying to kill us, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, it's culture. It's what's happened. It's what our parents did and our grandparents did. Today in Australia, 20 to 25% of children are considered overweight or obese. Does that just blow your mind? One in four kids are overweight or obese. Where do you think we're going to be 10, 20, 30 years from now? Heading 200 metres, go right on the roundabout, third exit. You know you put weight on, right? Yeah. And you know that it makes you feel unhealthy, right? Yeah. How, what's the real impact to you, though? Like, how do you really feel about it? Like. Well, what's, it, what's it really made you feel? I mean, I know Kyle gives you a tough time in that, but like... Yeah, besides what? that, um, uh, truthfully, it doesn't really make me feel any different. Right. Daddy. Uh, Hang on, Teeks. I would like to lose it. Yeah. What do you think the benefits would be? Um, well, obviously I'd lose weight. Yep. I'd be healthy. Um, 
I would be able to do much more active things. Yep. And, uh, so, yeah. do you think it'd be a good solution, though, to go down to the coast and sort of work with Uncle Anthony and Auntie Kate? Alright, so you guys know what to do when you get home. Darling, you need to unpack your stuff for camp. Whatever's dirty goes into the laundry straight away. Is your water bottle full? Oh my gosh. I have to fill it up today. Yeah, okay, put that straight in her room. They can go in her room. This will go in the laundry. Chuck four slices in the toaster. Yeah. I'll just wipe this cupboard down. <coughs> So you're having some? Or? No, I'm fine, mate. I'll have a cup of tea and that's about it. No, 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 just no Xbox now. You can watch cartoons, all right, for now, and that's it. Liam's 80 kilos, and I don't know how to help him. To see what's happened over the past few years, and for us to know what we know, mm. I. I don't want to watch that get any worse. Yeah, well as I said, like I, I'm prepared to do whatever it takes to help him. Um, and if, if it means he comes down here, um, then, then so be it. You wouldn't miss me. <laughs> I would. <laughs> <laughs> I would miss you. Yeah, it would give me a great opportunity to get healthy. Alright, for some weeks now we've been deliberating about how we can help Liam with his health challenge. Uh, we had a quite uh, in-depth discussion this evening and what really hit home for us was when he said himself, you know, if I don't do something about this, I'm going to die. And so that's real for him. He's staying here for the first uh, night tonight. As I came to record this, I heard this wild animal-like noise out of his room and it was his snoring. So clearly it is time to take action. The things that we're all going to commit to is drinking more water, eating more of a plant-based uh, nutrition, moving more, getting more oxygen into the body. Uh, it'll be for three months. He will move schools. You know, it's not going to be easy, but we're committed to it and let's see what tomorrow brings. Oh, and in case you didn't know, I'm Uncle Anthony. You sure you're all right with this? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, three months isn't long. I think everyone's, you know, everyone's pulling together to help you anyway. You, you know that, don't you? Yeah. Like, I'm not sort of kicking you out of home or anything like that. It's just, I just want to help you, mate, you know? And I'm really proud that you were able to make that decision. Behave, right? Yeah. I'll put some credit on your phone. Okay. Right, so that you can call me. Yep. All right, champ. Love you, son. I love you too. All right, buddy. Bye. Bye. Help out, won't you? Make sure you help Auntie Kate. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Don't worry. Keep your room tidy too. Yes. All right, okay. buddy. I'll see you later. Okay. Okay, mate. Bye. Bye. Okay, Tiger. See ya. As you know, my name is Liam, and I uh, just woke up. At the time right now is 6.27, and I think I'm about to go to 6.28. And um, yeah, I'm pretty tired. I had a bit of a late, light, late night last night. Oh, and I hope I'm okay today. I'm amazed at how many people, while they're having lunch, they're already thinking about what they're going to do at dinner. And they're basically living from food to food, instead of living their life and using food to sustain what's inspiring to them. Being overweight, we know, is unhealthy. We get excess fat deposited in all of our internal organs. I assisted in some surgery when I was younger, and I was amazed that when they would actually open up someone, 
who is overweight, you actually see the fat deposited on their liver, the fat deposited around their heart. When you're fat on the outside, you're also fat on the inside. I'm certainly no picture of health. I look like I've swallowed a sheep. Not only am I overweight, I'm also sick. For the past nine years, I've been taking pills night and day just to get by. But as of today, I'm saying enough is enough. G'day, my name's Joe Cross, and I'm an Australian. In case you couldn't work that out from the accent. I've just arrived in the United States. I'm not gonna eat any of your food. I've come here to fast for 60 days. All I'm gonna do is drink juice, green juice, 60 days, 60 nights. Well, it's pretty exciting. What do you think about meeting Joe? Like, wow, I just cannot believe I'm actually going to meet him. I can't believe it either. How are you leaving? You good, mate? You're looking good, son. Nice, nice shirt, mate. <laughs> I call fat extra energy, I don't call it fat. Because that's all it is, it's just energy stored up waiting to be used. Like what you've done is you've stored up ready for a, a famine. Like there's a desert island we're going to and there's not going to be any food for about six months and you've bought breakfast, lunch and dinner and you've tucked it under your, hmm. under your skin waiting for it to be used. Yeah. So now what we've got to do is think about you're about to use up all those spaghetti bolognese meals, all those pizzas, all those burgers, mm. all those french fries, chips, what we call them out here, mm. you've got to use them up now because you've got them stored on you waiting to be used. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. How bad do you want it? Oh. If I give you, if you ask you out of 100, how bad do you want to do this? About 95. 95 is good, mate. I can live with that. Mm -hmm. All right. What are you going to do to Savo? Um, I don't know. I haven't really made any plans yet. Right. You don't know? Nope. Xbox? Um, nah. Nah? Maybe some soccer? Maybe. Amazing day today. Uh, Joe Cross spent a bunch of time with Liam. For Liam, it was like he was meeting a movie star. He was just in awe. And what a great opportunity for Liam to spend some time with someone who's just been through the process that he's about to embark on. So, yeah, great times. Today I think was a pretty hard morning for Liam. He got woken up by cameras, which I don't think would be easy for anybody. And then, you know, today wasn't exactly what he would call fun. And so I think when he's out walking and exercising, when he feels like he's, you know, pushing himself hard, he just doesn't like that at all. And I think, you know, even just walking up our stairs here, he's out of breath. So that was really pushing him out of his comfort zone. And I think, you know, being in a new environment, I mean, he knows us, but it's a, you know, it's a different environment. He's away from his familiar surroundings and family, his familiar food as well. And, um, you know, at a new school, there's a lot of things that he's adapting to. So I'm not, I'm not too worried, but there's certainly, I've had moments where I think, oh, you know, we've done the right thing. Um, you know, I think, and he wants it, he wants this change. But at the same time, I can see inside, it's, it's just so much easier to, yeah, to want to stop as well. To be held to the ball. Yeah, to the you got it, mate. Good job. Dude. Mate, you had that 
feel? Terrible. Mate, you did so unreal. That's what it's going to take to get all over this, you know? It's that little bit of hurt. You proud of yourself? No? Did you think you'd be able to do that today? No. No. So you've done it, right? Good job, mate. First day of exercise today for Liam. I think it was a real shock to the system to him. Uh, typically when he comes and visits us at the Gold Coast, it's all about fun and the beach. But today, uh, yeah, it really hit home. Again, he did it, a uh, bit of complaining, but we're on our way. World Health Organization has put out a statement saying that at current rates by 2030 1 billion people in the world will be considered obese. When I started this, what I really wanted to lose out of all of this um, film all of these three months was this. Now, yeah, not really that good. Now, I have lost a little bit of weight since then, but yeah, as you can see, yeah, still got a fair bit there. So yell it out, why do you eat? Fuel the body, nourish, energy to get through the day, social, boredom, comfort, breastfeed. Was that, was that a man who said that? Keep going. Cravings, why else? Habit. Socialising, uh, yeah, bring it up if you could, Katie. So I wrote uh, pleasure, habit, convenience. Some people just grab it because it's there. Fat loss, muscle gain, emotional. Who eats emotionally? If your hands are up, you lie about other things as well. <laughs> Boredom, taste. Who just loves the taste of certain foods? Big time. So in some cultures, you eat just because that's what dad ate, that's what grandpa ate. When you go around, you have those gatherings. That's just what you eat, right? Energy, performance, and there's a whole bunch of others. Unless you understand the why, in other words, 80% of the game is psychology. So, I want you to take just 30 seconds now and, and write down the top three reasons and think of a day. Think of you going through a day. You go, right, with breakfast, why do I eat? Well, just because I'm hungry. But then the next thing that you put in, why do you put it in? Uh, I'm bored. Uh, next, oh, because I'm convenient, it's there. Ready, go. What's your favourite thing to eat? Well, that's a bit of a um, hard question because there's a lot of things. No, there's got to be something you love the most. Like if I said you couldn't have this for the rest of your life, what would be the one that you'd be most upset about me saying? Probably spaghetti bolognese. Spaghetti bolognese. I love spaghetti bolognese too. It's good. Mm. So there are some foods which I like to think about being closer to the sun, like where the energy comes from, which is the stars, and that food is made by Mother Nature. Then the, the other end, the spectrum, we've got the other food which is made by people in white coats. Right? Scientists and food people and manufacturing, and it's all packaged stuff, it doesn't grow on trees. I mean, I've never seen a meat pie growing on a tree, have you? No. Right, so. But you've seen apples growing trees, you've seen oranges, you've seen bananas? Yep. Right, so who makes them? Mother Nature. Mother Nature, right. So I say that stuff made by Mother Nature, that's closer to the sun. Because the sun was directly involved in manufacturing that, right? So now we go down to the other end, which is your spaghetti bolognese you love very much. Well, spaghetti, that doesn't grow out of the ground. No, it doesn't. Does it, right? Someone makes that. Now, they make that indoors, just to use the analogy. 
the sun, it's still sun food because the flour, the wheat, whatever they made the pasta out of came from the sun, but they've cooked it, they've stripped it, they've changed it, they've beat it up. Yeah. Which means a lot of the good energy that was harnessed down here in our plant world has been released and gone somewhere else. Yeah. So in order for you to be healthy, you've got to have more of this type of food than this type of food. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Because you've got to get more sun into your body. All these people, they love going down the beach here and lying down and getting sunburnt and getting brown, getting a nice tan, but what they don't realise is they've got to put the sun inside their body as well. We need food because food creates the basic energy that our body needs to be able to function well. If we put good, healthy food into our bodies, it's going to function better. Right. If we eat processed food, if we eat food that's full of sugar and unhealthy fats and has low nourishment levels, then that's going to create a stress on our body. And our body is fantastic at being able to adapt for a certain amount of time, but there comes a point where our bodies actually start to suffer because of what we're put in. And we're going to have lower energy levels, we're going to feel less vital, we're more susceptible to disease. In every way, we're going to be affected by what it is that we've been eating. It's more convenient for me to uh, duck to the supermarket and buy uh, certain products, you know, for like 15, 20 bucks and whip up a quick meal. You know, it might be macaroni and cheese or whatever, but, you know, I can get like a tray of lasagna from the supermarket for, you know, $10 and get six meals out of that, you know, and vegetables may not be fresh vegetables. If I'm in a hurry, it's going to be a canned option or a, um, a frozen option. And with that, I can knock out a cheap meal. It's fast and it's budget driven. It's got nothing to do with health. So today Liam came in and had his overall wellness evaluated. We looked at his spine and nervous system. 50% of Liam's body weight is actually fat. And then he's turning and facing away from me. So we'll be looking for something in this area here on the x-rays and then all the other analysis that we've done. Good job mate, you can put your shirt back on. There are a number of concerning things on his x-rays, what we call subluxations, that put stress on the spinal cord, onto the nervous system, and ultimately decreases the body's ability to heal and to function as best it could. So I look at where Liam is at uh, emotionally uh, with his health, and today was both concerning but also uh, quite productive in that I think there's a lot of ways that we can help him um, to heal and to function better and just to actually um, allow his body to be at 100%. We think that because we walked from the house to the car, we went for a walk. Or we walk around indoors all day long that we have walked. No, you have not. You are not nourished in that process. You have to move your body through time and space, distance, outside. Hello, buddy. Straight into it, mate. Exercising and increasing our heart rate is definitely good for us. One of the fantastic things about the human body is its ability to adapt. So when we exercise and when we put an appropriate level of stress on our heart and on our muscles, then they begin to function more effectively. They adapt to the stress and our heart then has a better ability to pump our blood and our oxygen through our bodies. Our muscles become stronger, our joints become healthier and it just has a positive effect in all areas of our lives. Three, two, one, 
and good. Last 10 seconds. Flat stress. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, 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 That's it. Awesome. Awesome. Last one. Three, two, one. And we're done. <laughs> That's it. Come on. Yeah. <sighs> Whoa. Well. You're doing good, mate. <sighs> Oh. Oh. Lead the way. That's it. Let's go. Animals play all the time, even adult animals. The four-legged ones sometimes stand on their hind legs and push each other with their top legs. They're always playing, they're moving, they're dancing. Birds keep doing it. Little children naturally play 24 hours a day except when they fall asleep. All they want to do is get up and move and play, go outside, jump on the trampoline, run along the beach, and it's fabulous. That's the healthiest thing they can be involved in. But in the modern world is to get on a computer today and play games, doing Minecraft and Halo and Xbox and all of the games. And thankfully, it does capture their imaginations. The downside is that they're not moving. They're not dancing, they're not playing, they're not jumping, they're not interacting. That's the downside. When I look around at the number of hours children spend on handheld devices these days, it's literally a catch, it's an extension of their body. And it puts them into a position with their posture where their head is forward. And if you're repeatedly in that position, it produces this forward head posture. And research shows that stretches the spinal cord five to seven centimeters and causes problems, pathological tension in the body. The other challenge is that every inch the head goes forward, it literally puts more pressure through the spine and it deteriorates at a more rapid rate. That's gonna affect the person's overall well-being, not just physically, but emotionally, as well as where those organs are receiving those nerve endings. One of the things that I often hear about video games is that you know, there is a positive side to them, which I agree with in that they you know, create new skills and abilities. But I think the really important thing is you know, to just be able to keep it in balance. If someone's playing you know, half an hour video games a day or whatever, that's one thing. But when we get kids who are playing you know, six or eight hours uh, every day, who are up till you know, one or two o'clock in the morning, who are tired at school because of the fact that they were they didn't get enough sleep because they were playing some uh, game or other then we actually start to see the really dark side of video games you guys you've been on this for hours now okay off What's done? I want you to outside, you need to go and play. Yep. There's lots of benefits to video games. But to do video games at the expense of other fulfilling things is to become addicted to the video games and not having the other aspects of life. And life is gonna require all things. You're gonna have to be able to socialize. There are seven areas of life. We have spiritual quest, we have mind development quest, we have vocational quest, we have financial quest, we have family quest, we have social quest, and we have physical health and well-being. In order to have empowerment in all areas of life, it's wise to engage in all areas of life throughout your life. Gloves on. That's it. Push in, push, 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 push. Good. Other one. Push hard through. Good. All right. Jump on there. So, feet leave the floor. Let's start with a warm up, just 50 jumps. And then just change into some running, hands up. That's it. Good, mate, nice and focused. Read the words.
Good, mate. Five, four, three, two, one, and step off. Good, arms out to the side, and little circles forward. That's it, a little bit faster. Good, just step forwards a little bit, make the circles wider, wider, that's it. Wider, keep your head up, good posture, all the way. Nice and open now, good, good, and stop, go back the other the way. The greatest thing wide. parents can do is by teach through exemplification. Children have mirror neurons. They learn monkey see, monkey do. And if they see the parents inspired by their life, engaged in their life, eating wisely, living wisely, that's the wisest thing the parents can do. They do it by exemplification. Good. Left, right. Good. No more smiling. Left, right. Good. Left, right. Left, right, left. Left, right, left. Good. Left, right, left. Good. Ten. What? Ten. Go. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Left, left, right. There's Good. a beautiful right. African proverb. Uh, which is that it takes a village to raise a child. And I think there's so much for us to learn from this. A child gets an incredible amount of influence from their parents, but also uh, the whole village can have such a great influence on a child just by being there, creating a sense of security, sharing stories, and being a backup in so many ways. Nice and tight, bend at the knees. That's it, faster, faster, rip it up, rip it. That's it, good. Ow. Keep going, keep going. Again, left, right, left, go. Boom, Exercise boom. can be done in so many different ways and it also creates a fantastic opportunity to interact with other people. When people uh, train together in a group, when they play team sports, uh, when they do something with someone that they are close to or love, then exercise is a great way of building relationship and increasing the bond uh, and the connection between uh, individuals and groups of people. Harder. And just not as, not as fast, just a bit harder. So just Okay. Good, keep going. Good, mate, good, excellent, keep going. <laughs> Making exercise fun and keeping it short and, and sharp as well, it makes it more sustainable as a family. So it might be, you know, all the kids getting home from school and everyone going out for a bike ride before they get stuck into their homework or, you know, making your weekend, you know, a trip to a park or a family bike ride and that, it is fun then, you know, they're out there and they're connecting as a family. It's not connecting around the table to eat and it's not connecting around the TV to watch a show. And I think, you know, that's going to create a, a deeper relationship as a family too, which is really important. About two years ago, in um, October sometime, uh, my mum got a brain tumor and um, she passed away. And yeah, at home we um, just light a candle for her every. Um, uh, I can't remember the date it was that she died, but it was sometime in October, and I think it was on Saturday. As a medical student, I spent three years studying all about the physical side of the human body. And I was amazed, and I have to say delighted, uh, to, to discover the incredible complexity of how all the different parts interact and, and the wonder of uh, you know, this body that we have. But then once I became a doctor, I started to realise that as important is a person's emotional state and what's going on in their psyche and that these two things really interact to create a person. So we need to look at not only their physical state, but we need to look at their emotional state, and then we really start to see the connection between these two parts of a person.
She was such an amazing woman. And just look at her. She's got a beautiful smile and a beautiful heart. And she left a beautiful family. And um, I just, I want to do her proud and I know that we will. And um, I just admire Liam for what he's doing. And just, he's amazing. I've been studying the mind-body relationship and lecturing about that for literally 40 years. I even wrote a textbook on over a thousand health conditions and the psychological components underlying them. It would be hard to convince me that there's not psychology in each condition we have. And I know that in medicine, in allopathic medicine, there is a belief that there are genetic diseases and there are defects and there are protein problems and these types of things. And I don't question that. I am fully aware of those researches and I am fully aware of those approaches. But I've yet to see a condition inside the human being that doesn't have a psychological component. Yep, and the cool thing about the, um, the spring roll paper, if you look at this, it's just got some coconut oil and, and oh, some flour and okay. some salt. So it's really simple. Look at that. Yep. Oh. I see through. So tonight was really a great night. We had a lot of fun in the kitchen and Liam helped me prepare dinner. And he just really loved getting hands on and learning about the food and just getting involved, which was really great. Um, yep. It was interesting though, he, like he really opened up before. and See? reflected that he, he loves dinner time um, more, not so much because it's about the food, but also because it's a time that his family would all come together. And often he would go Very back for seconds or sometimes more. Um, but that was because he wanted to make that time last longer. And then we had to walk up and down the hill two oh, times. The hill, huh? Mm. How are you going with that hill? Terrible. <laughs> when I hear the statement that we're being overfed and undernourished, I definitely relate to that. I think there's so much happening now where we feel like we have to have everything. We have to have the latest gadgets and we have to have, you know, the best clothes and we, and we have to have so much food. And I actually don't think that that's what brings true happiness and health. I think that being healthy is much more than just a physical thing. I think it really ties into, are we doing what we love with our lives? Do we have good relationships? Do we feel positive about the future? You know, when people are doing what they love, and when people are with people that they love and are feeling loved, that is actual nourishment. It's about nourishment of the soul. And if we really focus on nourishment of the soul and what a person really needs at a deeper level, that for me will create true health and that will create true happiness. Too many people get up in the morning, see, they're in a hurry, they gotta get to work, they look at each other and go, see you later, bye-bye. Where was the embrace? Where was the holding? Where were the hands on the face looking at each other's eyes and feeding and nourishing each other with that kind of a living ordinance of love and connection and bonding? So I was just out at lunch before and uh, just saw this family sitting there and one of them's on a phone, another one is on a video game and another one is, is um, playing on an iPad and it just, it just made me sad, you know, there's so much disconnect out there in today's world and one of the things that we've made it to be a really big priority for our family is that family connection time. And so at the end of every day, at our meal time, regardless of who's sitting at our table, we just ask one simple question and it tells us so much about our friends or our family who, who are with us. And that is, what are you grateful for? Do you think that you have room for dessert? I don't know. Of course. Who doesn't? Never underestimate the nourishment value of good relationships. When people are spending time with people who love them and that they love, that actually nourishes them on a much deeper level. And when that's not present in their lives, then they look for it in other areas, whether it's food or drugs, alcohol, various forms of addictions. All of these add up to an attempt to replace something that could so easily be there naturally.
Liam's is having his first time on a motorbike. Hey dude, doing good, woohoo! <laughs> and uh, like my heart's just singing right now. Like uh, when we're at home, and I think you've got the ability to have a TV and um, video games and just sit around and do nothing. Kids would gravitate to that, but when you've got this kind of stuff where they can just get out and do their thing, like this is what life's all about and exploring and having fun and, and just learning new things. And our, our boys just caught a frog just before and they think that's pretty cool. Today's been a really good day. We had a campfire last night and the boys camped out as well. And you know, Liam's just having a good time. Look at watched a couple of YouTube videos and uh, when I looked at the clock just right there, right beside my bed it was 10 o'clock so uh, and everyone went to bed and I was like and when I was watching a YouTube video I kept on going cross-eyed you know that feeling you go cross-eyed a lot while you're focusing on something and you're really tired yeah Something like this. Imagine. So we're building a garden. Okay. Show me where you want it. Come. You lead the way. You were thinking here? Yeah, around here. Okay, that's a good spot. So we've got the ocean there, so we've got east yeah. there. We've got all the sun here to capture. Yeah, that'd be good. Are you ready? Yep. We do it together, huh? Let's see if we can do a veggie garden in an hour. So we had a, a really good day today. It's, uh, it was exciting. We had um, Remy come around and he helped us put a veggie garden in the backyard. It was really good to see Liam out there and getting involved and you know he was shoveling the dirt and planting the, the, the little seeds as, as well as some of the little seedlings and I think for him to have some responsibility to have something that actually depends on him will be really good. I think it's going to be great and our boys loved it as well. But I think for Liam to have something that he's responsible for and to have some accountability as well and just to kind of see something grow from him taking care of it will be really, really cool. So it was, it was a good morning, a really good day. If you pick up the watering can every morning, fill it with water and let's just keep nice watering. 7.30 before school, water it in. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. See ya. I think one of the healthiest things that we can do for ourselves and the generations that are just coming up is to get them involved in planting and growing and harvesting foods from their own garden, from the fruit trees, from vineyard that you have right there where you live. Getting into the plot of ground and being able to experience these kids actually watching the process and then picking their own tomatoes, biting into it. What a thrill. Has everyone seen that picture, right? like the Da Vinci, the anatomical structure? So our body is designed on exact mathematical geometries. And every single plant, whole plant food is designed, that's like just say, you know, in our cell there's a star, for example. There's exact plant whole foods that are designed to go into that slot. Now, if we're taking things that don't fit in there and we're putting it into our body, where does it go? Usually storage. 
And so our body will actually produce storage units, which are called fat cells, where you, you just go, well, your cells are going, hello, no, nah, we can't use this. So there's this whole thing called the doctrine of signatures. And if you start to look at foods and start to realize there's parts of our body that look like certain foods, and just could it be possible that that's what we're supposed to eat to help that part of our body? So every cell, tissue, organ, anatomical structure, physiological function has a replicate whole food that we should be putting in to feed those cells. If you have any kind of a problem with the heart, with the arteries, with the blood, if you want to get to the root of the beat of the heart, eat beetroot because they have found that's exactly what it targets. It'll help to get rid of arrhythmias, palpitations, all kinds of things. That's why it's called the beet to this day, and most people don't know that. Like walnuts, they look like the brain. They got left and right hemispheres, the wrinkles on top. The shell is just like the cranial cap. You eat walnuts, you eat pecans, macadamias, hazelnuts, any of those things. Tested it at Cornell Medical and other places. They know it's true. If you eat a lot of nuts, it's gonna target that function and lift it. Even carrots, what a brilliant food. They've known for thousands of years that carrots improve eye vision. But the problem is, you have to eat them. And for a lot of people, that's tough to eat real food. You're gonna make 200 decisions a day on what you put in your body food-wise. 200 is what you'll make. People don't realize that, but we make 200 decisions every day. Breakfast, am I going to have milk, am I going to have toast, am I going to have Vegemite, peanut butter? You make all these yes, no, yes, no decisions about what you're going to eat. You go into a restaurant, you've got like 50 choices just in one restaurant. So you've got all these choices constantly asking yourself, should I have this, should I have that? Go and look around the world, most people struggle with that. I did, still do. So the, the easiest tip I can give you on your journey as you start now is think about the food that's closer to the sun, Fruit, vegetables, nuts, beans, seeds, these sorts of foods, they're holding in the energy from the sun. They're, they're harnessing what I call captured sunlight. Foods that are down here, the boxes and cardboard boxes that you get in the supermarket, they're energy, but they don't have a lot of nutrition in there. They don't have, they don't have a lot of powerful nutrients to help you fight off disease, feel better, look at the world happier. A lot of people think when I say we need to eat whole foods, they think I mean eat a whole donut. There's a difference in foods. You walk into most grocery stores or markets where you can buy things, they'll have over a half a million packaged, canned, bottled items with pictures of food but there's no nourishment or very little and all kinds of chemical additives, colorings, flavorings, everything else. And we just pig out on it. I sort of look at some of the food that we're eating is almost like cigarettes in terms of we really shouldn't be eating it. We know it's bad for us. There's plenty of evidence to show it's bad for us. And yet it's being put in the food that we eat and that we feed our children every day. One of the things that I find is that a lot of us don't actually know how to eat healthy and what is good for us. And what I say is, if it's in a packet, if it's in a can, then it's probably not good for you. And the more that we can eat that's fresh, that's grown locally, even better if we grow it ourselves, that's what we really want to be doing as much as possible. See what we can find today. There's always some yummy fruit in here. Might get some grapes, that looks nice. So then can you get a paper bag down and we'll get some grapes? Uh, Good job, right, have that in. So, can you get me three passion fruit, please? It's good. Right, go sit down and have it. Mm. 
Hey. Lucky boy. Hey. <laughs> Come on, you can get it in there. Open up. Good job. <laughs> yeah, well, happy birthday to you, Mum. If um, if you, uh, if heaven ever receive, receives this video, <laughs> then um, yeah, hopefully you'll get it. Um, this is your son Liam, and I'm um, um, here to say happy birthday, and I hope it's good where you are. We're off to get the boys now from school. Just managed to chop some veggies quick before I came because it just life's a bit of a bit of a blur with kids, and I, I totally get like it's so hard for for parents to you know, juggle everything and, and I think it's easy to grab stuff out of a packet and throw it in a lunchbox and, and you know, just it, it's quick and it's easy and I know I, I do I do that sometimes, Just you just get into survival mode and it's crazy and it's busy and kids are screaming and they want food now and it's easy to get a packet of chips or a muesli bar and, and keep them quiet. <laughs> if there's lollies or an apple, most children are going to go for, you know, for the lollies. When he first came to us, at 11 years old and 80 kilos, he was headed down a path of diabetes or heart issues or, you know, a long list of health conditions. And so, you know, I think that if there's parents out there, firstly, if you can prevent that, that's awesome. You know, start start from the start with the end in mind, and um, you know, and, and start giving your children what they need from the get go, not what they want. In nearly every developed country over the last three generations, and it's getting worse with the next generations coming, is obesity, extreme weight gain. The WHO, the World Health Organization, is constantly bringing out notifications and warning about the increasing rates of obesity in not only the Western world, but also in the underdeveloped countries. And at the same time, what we're seeing in these countries, especially the poor countries, is the influence of unhealthy eating habits, huge amounts of soft drinks being consumed, the fast food companies are selling more and more of their products in these countries. The highly processed, low nourishment foods are what the people are being able to access. And at the same time, we're seeing these increasing levels of obesity. Yes, I think that we could probably put a pin a factor of responsibility on fast food chains and their system, but they're just trying to find out what people are looking for. So if we don't empower our own lives as individuals and educate people in the general market, they're going to be vulnerable to those quick fixes. I just think that with society today, all of a sudden sickness is becoming normal, obesity is becoming normal. Not moving is becoming normal. Sitting in front of computer screens is becoming normal. And so all of a sudden, the standards that we might have had when we were younger and growing up or that our parents had, it's so different now. And I just don't get how someone can look at Liam or any other child for that matter who's overweight and think, ah, it's not that bad. What, what did he eat? Donut. It feels like everyone is seriously against us right now, like teachers, other parents, and then and then grandparents giving him all this. Come crap. sit down. I want to have a bit of a chat with you. How was your day at school today? It was good. Mm -hmm. And you had your picnic today. Yep. And so what happened? Well, you had to share your food, mm -hmm. and um, most people brought junk food. Yeah. Some. You had some? Okay. And did you have a lot? Um, I guess so. Yeah? What's, what's something that you had? Hot 
or sponge. I'll go sponge, okay. I might give you uh, a pen and you can actually write it down. So you already had lunch. This was after lunch today. Is that right? Did you have some of the chocolate balls that I gave you? Yeah. Yeah. There was a um, brownie. Yep, okay. Wow, you went all out. There was chocolates and chips and iced chocolate donuts and buns and cupcakes and it, it, it would have made me sick just trying to eat all of that food and yet um, he was, I could see he still probably wanted more. And it just makes me really frustrated. We're just going backwards and we're putting all this hard work in whole foods, live foods, hydration, getting his body moving and then in one foul swoop in like a 10 minute hit he's just gone and eating all this crap and that's just crazy. So that's eight hours and 47 minutes that you need to work on your bike just to just remove the calories, not even the toxins, we're just purely talking calories of what you just did. Okay. Eight I, I, eight and a half hours. So do you think that those five, ten minutes of eating all of that food is worth having to do that? No. Not really, huh? Mm. And I think, you know what, a lot of people don't understand that. They go, oh, it tastes so good and you just eat it really quick. And then all of a sudden it's like, man, do you realise how long your body has to work to try and deal with that stuff? Mm. That's it, nice. Wow. Good, good job. job. Good 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 job. Good job. Good good job. Great, you're doing really good. All right, you've got five seconds to go. Give it everything. That's it. I want to hear that wearing. That's it. That's it. Good job. <laughs> Slow down. I oh, know, I got confused. That was a long five seconds. So it's been a, a pretty big week this week. We had uh, Liam had spent some time away from us for a few days just hanging out with his family, and he'd come back and put on mm, about three kilos, which wasn't great. Um, and yeah, we, we realised or we found out that he'd been throwing away his food that we've been giving him in his lunchbox uh, at school each day and just eating a couple of pieces of fruit and also kind of getting food from his friends um, as well, so pizza and whatever else he was getting. So pretty emotional week. It's not just about getting on the bike. Get your phone out of your pocket for me. Get your phone out of your pocket. How, does it, do we have to exercise we for an do. hour every day? We haven't even done an hour, mate. Three, two, one, go. Fast as you can, fast as you can. Good job, mate. Don't slow it down. Pick it up, pick it up. Faster, faster, faster. Go, 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 all the way to the line. I can't do it any faster. You can, you're doing it awesome. No, I can't. You're running me so hard, I'm losing my speed. Uh -uh, we're not going in. Let's go again. Go. Three, two, one, go. Fast as you can. That's a jog, sprint it up. That's it, that's what I want. Let it out, let Shut it go, go, go. Many people confuse support and nurturing with love and they don't understand the other side of the equation because support needs to be balanced by challenge and nurture with accountability and a pleasure with some of the pains of life, the responsibilities of life. And I say that true love is a balance of complementary opposites. But we get the most out of people and they grow and develop most if we actually give them both support and challenge at the same time. Yes, it's Nick's weight. It doesn't matter what Nick's weight is, mate. It's about you. It's about you being healthy and awesome. You're so incredible. You just need to believe in yourself, okay? We all have challenges that come up in our lives. The big thing is how we deal with those challenges. If we're supported, if we can actually approach a challenge as a learning opportunity rather than as a problem, if we can see that even if we sort of fail or don't succeed, it doesn't mean that we're bad or, or that we're stupid or anything like that. It's, it just means that this is what happened and what can we learn from that and how can we be different in the future? Ready? I want you to beat me to the end. Give and me everything you've got. You can do the washing up. No. Ready? Let's go. Go. That's it, that's it. Go, 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 go. Faster, faster, faster. Nice work, nice work. I'm right on you, I'm right on you, I'm right on you. Go.
language is really So we have to make sure that we as parents bring a nice balance of support and challenge as an act of love for our children, prepares them for the real world out there instead of making them overprotected, overnurtured, and thinking life's supposed to be easy and so supported and kind and everything else. And then the second challenge is there, we're not ready for life. So if we don't love our children, we've got to teach them the balance of both support and challenge. It helps them in their diet, it helps them in their genetic expression, it helps them in their life. Do you think there's going to be some tough times, like just then, where you don't want to do it, you're grumpy about it, you hate me for it, you hate Uncle Ant for it, or Dad, or whatever? But do you think if you push through it that you might get to where you want to go? Maybe. Otherwise, if you just sit on the lounge, how likely is that going to happen? That you reach your goals? Maybe like, maybe like a 10% chance out of 100. Right. So not that high, huh? Okay, so the last few weeks, uh, some challenges have come up with Liam. He's, he's bucking the system. He's, he's not committing to the things he originally agreed upon, things like throwing his water out, um, not eating the good food, getting garbage food from his buddies, uh, being disrespectful. And ultimately, it's not just affecting him now, it's affecting our family. So I... Um I feel like this is, it has been really tough this last, especially the last few weeks. It just, it feels like we're pushing and um, it just, yeah, it doesn't feel like it's, you know, it's, it's an easy thing and I know it's a tough thing for Liam. It's grating for us, it's grating for him. So I want to have a chat with him and just see how he's doing, where he's headed. Yeah. Um, and just get a, a fresh commitment. We're doing right things, there's just still more that we can refine, mm. you know. Ultimately, we need to take responsibility and help guide him. That's what he's here for, for, yeah. our, for our guidance. Looking good, mate. Mm -hmm. Grown a fair bit already, huh? Yep. You've been doing a good job. If you're gonna be here, we need to um, set it up in a way that you do want to be here. So talk to me about um, I know Auntie Kate went for a walk with you the other day and you were talking about Minecraft. Yeah? Yeah. That's something you play a fair bit? Yes. And so teach me about it. What do you do in Minecraft? And you've got full energy, so you've got ten hearts. Yeah, and yeah. ten hunger bars. And ten hunger bars. Are you able to accomplish more in Minecraft? Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, Either way, you can still do the same, but if you have no hunger bar, then your heart start going down. Right. And is that like real life? Sort of, yeah. Yeah. Well, knowing what I know about the body, it's very real. How would you feel about if we set up Minecraft here and we could play that? Is that something that would be cool? Yeah. Yeah? How cool? Very cool. Like t out of ten? Like are we talking a one, a two, or like a... Ten. A ten. So are you cool with that? Yeah. Every child lives by a set of priorities, a set of values, things that are most important to least important in their life. And whenever they're doing things that are highest on their values, they're more fulfilled. And when they do, they tend to have a long-term perspective. They tend to not be focused on immediate gratification, but more long-term opportunities. These changes need to be sustainable and it can't be just something he does in front of us. Right now, uh, it's a little bit of a, a kick in the guts. You know, there's a, not a respect there that uh, we're trying to have a healthy change. And what's no? I don't want to stay down here. Because? Because I don't like it down here on Veggie Island. So why is this veggie island? Because you only eat veggies. Uh-huh. And why do we choose to do that? Because apparently it's healthy. Apparently or it is? It is. Mate, pack your bags. I'm going to take you home. Let's go. Are you serious? as a heart attack, my friend. Do you think I should stay here? Why did you want to be with us in the first place? Well, I never wanted to. Well, it's not that. I never wanted to actually Are you make out the... Out it's probably dead. 
I'm getting it. I'm getting it. When we as individuals are not willing to be accountable for our perceptions, our decisions, and our actions, we resort to alternatives. And some of these alternatives are quick fixes, immediate gratifiers that actually have long-term side effects. But if we don't get to the real source, if we don't get into the unconscious motives, if we don't get into the behaviors, if we don't get into the patterns that are underlying these very drives, we're just going to spin our wheels and look for more drastic measures. And those are all side effects that are going to come with it. And it's wiser to go in there and be accountable and be responsible for wise action, wise perception, wise decisions. So much fight, courage in you. So Ant spent hours outside with Liam this afternoon just deliberating on back and forth if he's going to stay, if he's going to go home and I can see, you know, he really is struggling with the decision. He wants to stay for a lot of reasons but also he just wants to go home and, and back to his old ways. Um, I think deep down he really, really wants to be here and I think he knows what's possible. So I think he can do it. You want to come and chat with me outside? So what does this say? Can you read it out to me? I am for some reason committed to doing this for three days. For some reason. And what are you committed to doing? Exercising 30 minutes in the morning, mm -hmm. three bowls of water a day. Awesome. Cool. So in the end we got there today. Um, there were new commitments made from Liam, uh, albeit through gritted teeth. I think that the, the thing that really got us there was realising the way we like to do things is not necessarily the way he likes to. I'd rather be outside by the beach running along. We established he loves computers, he loves to watch the numbers, so we're going to get him a treadmill. And the re-commitments come from him and I think that's important. And we're going to start to do things the way he wants to do it and that's going to make things sustainable. There's so much marketing and advertising that's trying to get people to drink soft drinks and fruit drinks in bottles and cans. And these are all incredibly unhealthy for us. They're full of sugar and all they are is they're just rubbish that we're putting into our systems. Now, if we look at that human body, what's it mostly made up of? Water, how much? 65, 70%. How much of water is the planet made up of? About the same? All these things here, what are they made up of mostly? About the same percentage. I start to see a pattern here. So when we define eat food, what should we put in our body? This, alive, water-based plant foods. If that's mostly what you're putting in, see people are looking for, well, what's your detox tips? What's your weight loss tips? Put the stuff in your body that it needs to have there. And then there's not this excess, it'll start to detoxify the things that shouldn't be there. It'll start to actually feed the cells. Because people go, I just ate but I feel hungry, not too far down the track. Why is that? Because you didn't feed the cells, you didn't eat food. We're continually sweating, we're continually losing fluid when we breathe, and we lose water when we go to the toilet. We need to be replacing that water and we need to be keeping it moving through our systems. So drinking a good amount of clean water every day is a very healthy thing to do.
Hey buddy, what you got? Um, just some stuff to make a smoothie. Awesome. Okay. That's probably one of the best you've actually made, I reckon. The spinach tastes good. So, yeah, it's Friday night. Woo! And uh, that's a good thing. We have just come back from a organic um, uh, restaurant. Um, they've got like vegetarian pizzas, which doesn't even taste vegetarian. It tastes like like you're well, not entirely eating a meat pizza, but I'll uh, taste something like that. Strong all the way, matey. Go, go, go. You know, getting fit and healthy doesn't have to be hard. It all comes down to doing okay, nice good things strong, for your body nice consistently. You know, it could be pushing your kids in the pram and using that as resistance training, or it could be running up the stairs instead of walking up the stairs, or it might be riding your bike down the street instead of driving the car down the street. It could be having a green smoothie instead of a milkshake, or maybe switching a fizzy drink for a fresh juice or a water. It's those little things that if you can do consistently, that's what makes a big difference. That's what gets people results. And I really believe that if anyone out there wants to do that for their own life, they really can. There's lots of people who are thin, who don't eat well, who smoke cigarettes, who drink lots of alcohol, who don't exercise. They just don't eat as much as other people, that's why they're thin. But on the inside, they're very, very unhealthy. So we've talked a lot about being unhealthy. Let's talk about more about what actually being healthy is. Every day you wake up, there are three things you do, you put into your body, right? What do you put into your body? Three things. Every day. Food. Food's one, yep. Water. Water. Very good. Only one more to go. Um, and you've just done it in the last five seconds. Air. Very good. So you've got three things, air, water and food. Now you know what those three things are? They're energy. Now I would say is that the ball is in your court now, what you do with it. You know, because no one's going to appear and wave a magic wand and knock 20 pounds off you or in, you know, in Australia, 10 kilos off you, five kilos, whatever you want to lose. It's not going to happen. You've got to do it yourself. You've got to choose what you put in your mouth. It's all on you. A person who exercises regularly has a bigger, better looking heart. A person who eats well, uh, drinks enough water, you can see it when you look at their liver. Every system on the inside is directly affected by what we're doing on the outside and what we're putting into our bodies. But finally we're getting there. Liam's starting to make the changes that he needs to. He's starting to exercise. There's some consistency there. May not be at the intensity we'd necessarily like, but he's doing it. sometime to see uh, us doing stuff in the kitchen. They're actually going to get us running the marathon, the Gold Coast Marathon on uh, Saturday, well next Saturday. I'm only running the five kilometers out of all 42 but yeah at least it's something. We want to take the posture shots today and see where your spine is, where it's moved to and your progress. Mm -hmm. Right, and now turn and face the blue wall. Okay, so just pop the move over so your shoulder's touching on the side. 
and then just stand up nice and tall and it'll come down and tap you on the head and grab your heart. <laughs> and then awesome. we'll grab these handles and you just want your thumb on the goal part also and you want to stand straight nice and tall with your arms out a little bit. Perfect. Like there or? Yeah, that's fine. What's SMM mean? Skeletal muscle mass. That's a really, really good weight to be at for your height. You made some awesome changes so far, right? Yeah, especially on the outside, but not just there, also on the inside. So, did you run this morning? Yeah. Cool, how far did you go? 7.5. Wow, on the treadmill? Yeah, in an hour. Sweet, so you're looking good for the marathon? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, mate, just not on the outside, because clearly you've made impressive, impressive changes with your body. But on the inside, there's been some pretty cool stuff happening as well. So you've been nice and consistent with your adjustments. With uh, your spine, you'll remember, spine protects your uh, central nervous system. Mm -hmm. And so that controls everything in your body. And so as we've been able to change the shape of your body, the pressure's coming off the nervous system. This is an X-ray of your neck from the side. What we see here is that beautiful yellow line, that's the arc of life. But your spine was very straight where the red line is. Research shows that's going to be stretching the spinal cord five to seven centimetres. Puts a lot of pressure through the discs. Now, fast forward three, four months down the track, and we see that beautiful curve starting to come back in the spine, taking the pressure off the spinal cord, and allows that atlas to come to 31 degrees. That brain-body connection, so much greater, healing, functioning well. I know personally there's nothing better than feeling healthy. When I feel healthy, I have energy, I feel strong, I look at the day and I think, what can I do today? How well can I do it? My motivation's up. We all want to be healthy and feeling healthy just gives us a much greater chance to be doing what we want to do in the way that we want to do it. Get after that thing. Good job, mate. Get after it. Right, every step. That's it. Pump, pump, pump. Hard, hard, hard. Let's go, 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 go. Come on. <laughs> Imagine if you were the weight that you were supposed to be and that you know you can be, and then you put on a backpack with 20 kilograms of rocks in it and spent the whole day walking around. You feel exhausted. You feel weighed down. Being unhealthy is not a good feeling. Being unhealthy makes it very difficult to function well and to be happy in the rest of your life. So that's how much weight you've lost, mate. So just place it into the bag. Oh no! Yep. When it was on my body, it, was, it didn't feel as heavy. All right. Okay, let's go. All the way up. Oh. Keep going. <sighs> Keep moving. Keep moving. <sighs> Go, 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 go. How's that? Uh, hard. Can you imagine lugging that around still? <coughs> How that feels through your joints, through your body, through your back? Well, if anything, I felt it more on my shoulders. Yeah, absolutely. It's a big weight off your shoulders, isn't it? Mm hmm imagine having that and if you had it kept going the way you were would you be 80 now still no. four months in what do you reckon you would have been now probably been around 85 right so dude you've done an amazing amazing because every year i seem to go up by about uh, 10 kilos yeah wow but not, not exactly every year yeah not this year though it'll be a year to remember Oh, are we going to make a bonfire? Oh, I didn't have a bonfire. I didn't have it. Oh, this is crazy.
Rosie. Put your hands below. Please don't do this. Please don't do this to me. Ah! <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Th
positive impacts that, that I've noticed uh, directly with Liam is his maturity, his outlook on life, um, his strength, uh, his, his energy. He's, he's more active at school. Um, other parents have made comments straight away, wow, this is amazing, like we, you know, what's, what's he been through, what's he done? In his soccer games, they would never see him take a ball, go off to the sideline when he's coming off as a reserve um, and kick the ball around and still practice his skills. He'd normally be the first one sitting down, you know, complaining and huffing and puffing and that's all changed. You can list the 100 most common ailments or symptoms, and every one of them relate back to not enough water, not enough sunshine, not enough fresh air. What if health and life really is that simple? <laughs> If we say that wealth is not about how much money you have, that wealth is actually about how healthy you are and how much time you're able to spend doing what you really love. If we can teach people that relationships are incredibly important, then we can really change the overall way that we see health and well-being. This is about trying to make very small changes for a big time. As Albert Einstein said, the greatest teacher is exemplification. So if you care about your children, exemplify an inspired and meaningful life. Eat wisely to live, not live to eat. I'm so, so incredibly proud of Liam. The changes he's made are nothing short of inspirational. This hasn't been easy. This has been quite a roller coaster. There's ups, there's downs. But the fact is, he's done it. He's made the changes and he's winning. I'm so proud of you. Your family is so proud of you, Liam. And I know your mum will be so proud of you. That's it, faster, faster. Rip it up, rip it. That's it, good. Keep going, keep going.